Check this out. T-Rex opens up its mouth. Okay, hopefully that is rolling. I don't see any light flashing. I did press record though, so hopefully it's going. What's going on, Coyote Pack? And welcome back to this, a room with Coyote and a camera and nobody else. No Mark, no Mario, it's Coyote, unscripted, uncut. They just let me sit in a room for 15 minutes and ramble. And in here, I answer some of your questions. We talk about cool stuff. Probably gonna give away something else. Uh, last week I gave away, well, I guess not last week, I just found out the other day, but I did give away four VIP tickets to an upcoming Brave Wilderness Live event. And I'm gonna announce the winner of those tickets here toward the end of this video, and also tell you guys what we're gonna give away this week. But, first and foremost, I asked you guys to write in the comments section below and tell me what should we name this new section of Basecamp? Now, originally I was calling it Coyote's Corner, which kind of works good because there's a couple of corners in this room, but you guys came in with so many suggestions. And I think the one that myself and the entire Brave Wilderness team ultimately decided upon was Howlin' with the Pack. So let's put up a little graphic here or maybe here. From now on, this little segment is gonna be called Howlin' with the Pack. So it's Coyote and you know, coyotes howl when they talk. So this is me talking with you guys and hopefully it works. Anyways, I've got a lot of really cool questions. You guys wrote so many questions on the first episode of this series. In fact, I think it was like over 6,000 comments, which is crazy. I'd say on average with videos, we probably have around I don't know, it depends how big the video is, but somewhere between two and 6,000 comments. So for like a video of this stature to get 6,000 comments, pretty awesome guys. So I'm gonna try to keep everything theme based and today's theme is where all of this originated from. A lot of you wanna know more about my background, how I got into film slash video making, being the host of the ch this channel, et cetera, et cetera. So my first question comes in from Lion, Lion, I'm gonna have to spell this one out for you guys. L-A-Y-A-N-F-E-L-E-M-B-A-N. However you pronounce that username, thumbs up. This is the question. What made you start going out in nature and finding animals and creatures and all the stuff you do? And then were you inspired by something that made you do that? That is a great question. Now, I'm gonna tell you guys a little story. Most of you know that I love snapping turtles and one of the first big creatures that I encountered and captured was a snapping turtle when I was around the age of 10 years old. But what you don't know is that when I was even younger, when I was four years old, I caught my very first American toad. As a little toad, I caught my backyard, I put it in a shoebox, and my mom let me keep it overnight just so I could admire the amphibian and then the next day I let it go. But pretty much from that moment on, I was obsessed with animals. Um, I believe I was four years old when I caught this toad, so that's pretty young to be catching toads, um, but it's also a very safe species for anybody that's out there watching. If you wanna know a good first animal to safely catch, handle gently, and then admire and release back out into the wild, the American toad, or really any toad for that matter, is a pretty safe bet. Toads, as long as you wash your hands after handling them, are completely safe. Now, the second part of that question, were you inspired by something that made you do this? Yes, many things have inspired me over the course of my career. Oftentimes I give like a generalized answer, which is I was hugely inspired by Steve Irwin growing up, loved all the Crocodile Hunter shows. I also grew up watching a lot of Steven Spielberg films because Steven Spielberg is my favorite filmmaker. Watched every movie of his and that's what got me into a career, uh, sort of my background in screenwriting, directing, and producing. And then of course Bear Grylls, who hosted Man vs. Wild, was hugely influential because of his style of presentation and then the way him and his camera team completely engulfed the cameras into the environment to really make you feel like you were there. However, one huge inspiration of mine that I very rarely bring up, and I actually want you guys to search into this, was a show I watched when I was a little kid called Wild America with Marty Stauffer. Now, oftentimes you'll hear names like Steve Irwin, Jeff Corwin, Jack Hanna, Austin Stevens, all these guys that had nature shows, but people sometimes forget about Wild America, which was sort of a combination of 
a show host sitting in a room talking to you, which is what Marty did, and then this epic wildlife cinematography that him and his brothers went out and captured. It was sort of a precursor to planet Earth in a way. So if you get the chance, go out and search Wild America with Marty Southern. Now this was a series that I used to watch every Friday night as a kid, and it was a huge inspiration for me to not only get behind the camera, but ultimately to then get animals out there to everybody watching. So yes, Wild America, huge inspiration of mine. Great couple of questions there. Okay, so heading from that question into another question that has to do with the background of all of this. This one comes in from D underscore Maddie. Now, D underscore Maddie asks, how long did it take you guys to start the channel and get everything situated? And then a little emoji that's, hmm, I wonder what the answer to that is at Coyote Peterson. So, great question, D underscore Maddie. How long did it take to do this? Well, at this juncture, the Brave Wilderness channel is almost four years old. But what a lot of you probably don't realize is that Mark and I were developing this concept for a long time before we ever landed on YouTube. In fact, with our backgrounds in film and television production, we designed the series to originally be a TV show. We pitched it to multiple networks and famously, as most people experience, the answer was no. Nobody is interested in seeing a show host go out there, catch animals, and present them to the cameras. I can't tell you guys how many times we had doors closed in our faces saying, you know what guys, unless you have a big ensemble cast with a bunch of different dramas going on, it simply isn't going to work. So Mark and I spent years developing the concept and pitching the concept and everybody telling us no until finally we ended up getting the chance to pitch to Discovery Digital Networks. Now, Discovery Digital Networks is a branch of Discovery Communications, which owns Discovery Channel proper and Animal Planet, et cetera, et cetera. But we are no longer a part of that network at this time. Will it change at some point in the history? Will it change at some point in our history, I guess I should say? Yes, possibly, that's yet to be determined. But we got our foot in the door with Discovery Digital Networks and they said, if you guys can produce a show, we will help you launch it through our digital arm, which they did, and at the same time, we also launched our YouTube channel. So Discovery Digital Networks had a channel called Animalist, which some of you may remember. We launched on Animalist and also launched the Brave Wilderness channel in tandem at the same time. Now, Discovery Digital Networks didn't end up continuing on, and after a while, the network sort of nixed that branch, and we continued on as Brave Wilderness. So. I guess that's a really long-winded way of us saying, yes, there was a lot of development that took us to get to where we are, but the four years that we spent on YouTube got us to essentially this point, which is now I think, gosh, this video is probably just over 400 videos. We're approaching 2 billion views and getting really close to 11 million subscribers. That's 11 million Coyote Pack members out there watching, which is totally crazy. So that gives you guys a little bit of the background of where this started, what has inspired me, and how we've sort of gotten to this point. Now, I could ramble on for hours about what this is, but as you guys know, they give me 15 minutes to do these little segments, and so far, I think I've been in here for about five and a half, maybe six. I'm not real good at keeping track of the time in my head. Maybe it's like eight minutes, I'm not sure. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Now, this one's great because I'm getting to make a very special birthday announcement in the context of this question. Now, I picked this one because I felt it was very heartfelt. Um, and part of my job as a show host presenter and somebody that loves animals and is trying to inspire the next generation of explorers and animal lovers, um, it's important for me to be able to reach out to members of the audience, members of the audience of the Coyote Pack, or the Coyote Pack, I guess, in general, that it is okay to be super into nature and into the outdoors. And you should not feel alienated if you're not an athlete, or you don't like cars, or you don't like dolls, or action figures, or superheroes. It doesn't matter. Everybody's entitled to love what it is that they love. And I got this very heartfelt message from Mama Bee. And Mama Bee says, my four-year-old son Sage is your biggest fan. Well, thank you so much, Sage, for watching the shows and being a brave member of the Coyote Pack. And then she says, I'm also an environmental educator, but obviously you're way cooler. Mama Bee, please, I am not any cooler than you. If you're an environmental educator, you're doing an amazing job. And she says that Sage loves to pretend his toy dinosaurs are biting him. The noises he makes are hilarious. He tells all his friends at school to be brave and stay wild, and they look at him like he's crazy. So what advice do I have for her budding young naturalist? 
Well, Mama B, let me just tell you that even Coyote still plays with dinosaur toys. In fact, this is the original 1993 T-Rex toy from the Jurassic Park series. Here comes the birthday wish. Today, I'm dropping my papers everywhere. Today, while I'm filming this video, it's June 11th. Jurassic Park's birthday is officially today. June 11th, 1993 is when that movie came out. It changed my life, it changed a lot of people's lives. But the point I'm trying to make is that playing with toy dinosaurs is cool. Check this out. T-Rex opens up its mouth. Ah! Those teeth are sharp, it still hurts. And believe it or not, myself, Mario, multiple members of the Brave Wilderness crew all still collect Jurassic Park toys. In fact, I have been to multiple different stores tracking down all of the new Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom toys to collect those as well. My entire office is filled with memorabilia from these movies. So, what I am giving you as advice is continue encouraging Sage, and Sage, if you are watching this, play with dinosaurs. Get outside to explore. Set down your mobile device to get outside and enjoy the incredible planet that we have. Whether they're creatures of today or creatures of the past that unfortunately, well, I was going to say that we can't go out and encounter. I don't think you'd want to encounter a dinosaur at this point, but encountering a toy dinosaur is just as good. So like I said, it doesn't matter who you are or what you're into. Each person is entitled to love what it is that's special to them. I mean, even at this point, at 36 years of age, I still love toy dinosaurs. Yes, it is true. And I cannot wait to see Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, which comes out in just a couple weeks. Now, let's talk about the Brave Adventures Tour that is coming up. That's it for questions today. Hold on, I dropped all my questions. Let me pick these back up. There's so many guys, keep writing in. I'm gonna keep answering them to the best of my ability, but I do want to announce now who is the lucky winner of four VIP passes to one of the shows in the Midwest tour. And the winner is Kate Hollas. Kate, we are going to contact you personally. You had an amazing comment, extremely heartfelt that you wrote in, and we'll put it up on the screen right now. Kate, you are the lucky winner of those four VIP passes, and I cannot wait to meet you out there on the road. Now, you guys are probably thinking, Coyote, you said you were gonna give away something else cool this week. A lot of cool stuff in this room I think we could probably give away. Actually, you see this monitor lizard right over here? Check this out. This giant rubber monitor lizard. You know who this belongs to? Mario. This is Mario's and he's not here. And I could give it away, but I think I probably would need to ask his permission. So yeah, Mario, if you're watching this, I did not give away your rubber monitor lizard. But I know a lot of you have been asking, Coyote, will there be a Brave Adventures Volume 2? And the answer to that question is, Yes, I'm actually already working on the book. There will be another 10 chapters of Animals and Adventure. And for those of you that have not read the Brave Adventures book, whether you have or you haven't, if you haven't and you would like a copy, dun, 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 I'm going to give away an autographed copy in this video. And you guys know how you win things. You simply write in the comments section below and tell us why do you want to read the Brave Adventures book? Or if you've already read the Brave Adventures book and you want to win it for somebody else, that's also a pretty noble thing to do. So you can also write in the comments section below and tell everybody why you want to get an extra copy so you can give it to one of your good friends. All right, guys, I think that brings us to nearly the end. I think I'm under 15 minutes at this point, maybe just under, but I'm really excited to be doing this series. And when we launched the first episode, you guys seemed to really embrace this. We didn't know if it was going to work. And I will say it again, this is not for everybody. And whether you love it or hate it, thank you so much for being a member of the Coyote Pack and for watching this channel. Keep writing in the comments section below. I'm going to keep answering these questions. I'm going to hang out in this chair at least once a week, and we're going to put these episodes out usually on Sunday. So stay tuned. Much more to come with Howlin' with the Coyote Pack. Thanks guys so much for watching. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next Base Camp Adventure. Okay, now I cut the camera. Well, it's official. The new series is going to be titled Howlin' with the Pack. Thanks for all the great suggestions, everyone. Make sure to leave comments below for your chance to win an autographed Brave Adventures book. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on our next big adventure.